Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Kayla and today I'm finally going to be sharing with you guys my tips and tricks for throwing a tea party. I threw a tea party for my mom for her 55th birthday back in April and I sort of documented the process of putting the whole thing together since I catered the event and I made a lot of the things that we needed for the actual event as well. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys sort of the process and giving you some clips of the end result. Okay, so back in April, I asked you guys if you wanted me to share the process of me throwing a tea party for my mom. I had not planned on this video taking so long to come out, but Today, I want to share with you guys sort of the DIYs that I did, the menu that I created, and then show you guys the end result of the tea. So a little backstory, my mom turned 55 this year and for her 55th birthday, she wanted to do something big. And especially with us for two years, not having been able to see our extended family. So like my mom's father, her sisters, we hadn't been able to see them because they live in New York. My grandfather's in his 80s and is at higher risk i also am higher risk so we just we weren't able to see each other for a long time there's also little kids in our family we hadn't been able to see so we missed years of them growing up which was really you know sad but we were so excited to be able to have them come and celebrate my mom so the first thing that i felt like was kind of special i went to target and i just got generic invitations for the tea they were really cute they had little flowers on them which fit with our theme we did pick a flower and butterfly theme because my mom really likes butterflies and then one really special thing that i think anyone can do it's a pretty inexpensive diy is to put a wax seal on your invitations wax seal wax is pretty inexpensive i'm sure you can use other things i feel like i've seen people use crayons before and then you would just of course need the wax seal stamp i actually had a wax seal kit have a wax seal kit so i was able to just go ahead and use my wax seal kit for the invitations and i felt like that was a really special way to sort of send it off and like it's a tea party so it's kind of you know a more elegant type of event <laughs> It wasn't really that elegant. It was just in our living room. We cleared out the couches and we moved our dining room table into our living room. We ended up having, I think around 30 people show up, which was really, really lovely. But I still felt like it was a really special way to send the invitations off to our friends and family. Then I decided I wanted to DIY the bulk of the things that we needed. So for party favors, I decided I wanted to make teacup candles. Finding the teacups was the journey of a lifetime i went to so many different thrift stores looking i managed to find a few and then my dad and i actually stumbled upon a newer smaller thrift store that the proceeds actually go to supporting people in hospice care and it helps pay the remainder of the balances that they might have for their end of life care which in and of itself is like a whole separate conversation that that is even an issue but I thought I felt like it was a really wonderful charity to support and we found teacups galore there. So I managed to pick up I think 10 teacups. Now I needed around I think I ended up making 25 or 20 teacups total. The rest of the teacups actually came from my friend Dakota who is an incredible thrifter and auction buyer and yard sailor. And so she had actually ended up going to a yard sale after leaving my house. Like maybe 20 minutes later, she texted me. She's like, so I'm at this yard sale and they're giving away an entire box of teacups. Do you want them? And so I got them for free, which was amazing. And the cups were so, so beautiful. And I managed to use every single cup that we thrifted, which was really, really great. And I was so excited to do that. So this is sort of the process of how I made those teacups. Okay, so to achieve these candles, you're gonna need some soy wax, you're gonna need some teacups. I actually went ahead and got a candle making kit, which came with this little canister and the wicks. You're also gonna need an essential oil. I chose a vanilla, a pot for boiling water, and then these also came with the kit. They just hold the wicks in place, though my teacups ended up being too wide for them and I ended up using dowels instead. So the first thing you're gonna do is take your little sticky pad and stick it at the bottom of the cup and then attach the wick. Try to make sure you get it as close to the center as possible, otherwise the candle will burn unevenly, which I definitely noticed in one of my trial candles. So 
Just try to make sure you get it as close to the center as possible. Once you've put all of the wicks in, you're gonna go ahead and just pour some of the wax into your little cup and then put it in the boiling water. This is like a double boiling system. So if you have like a double boiler, you can always use that as well. But this sort of worked for me and just make sure you follow the instructions on your wax. I used soy wax that I got on Amazon. I bought like a five pound bag and it worked really well. I also looked up online how much fragrance I should be putting in. I think I put, nine full syringes and i burned one of these candles the other day cannot smell the vanilla at all so maybe you might need more than that but play it by ear i think this is kind of one of those things where you just add as much as you want also make sure as you're transferring the wax you're being really careful because the metal is going to get hot then if your teacup or whatever sort of container you're using can fit the wick Holder, make sure that you put that on. I'm again using dowels and then I'm just very gently evenly pouring the wax into the teacup and then just let it sit and cure and voila. I also wrap them up in little cellophane packages for our guests. The next thing that I was looking for were plates, porcelain plates. I really wanted to get pretty plates, but I didn't want to get plates that were so pretty I would feel bad about drilling because I needed a large plate, a medium plate, and a small plate to make the serving tiers. So I actually ended up finding, I needed six plates because I wanted to make two of the tier towers. That was also a struggle, especially to find like the big plates. The big plates were really the issue. Finding the medium and the small plates were really simple. I was able to do that quite, quite quickly, um, but it did take a bit of shopping around to find the bigger plates. Eventually I did find all of the plates that I needed. And this is actually a DIY I saw on Escape to the Chateau, which is an incredible show. If you guys haven't seen it, it's about a little British couple that moves to France and buys a chateau and they fix it up. I believe the wife is a designer and the husband is a architect. They have like the cutest little family. They have two kids and they're just like the sweetest. And the wife actually decided to drill holes through some porcelain plates and make the serving tiers for a tea that she was having at their chateau. And so I love the show. I've literally binged it from beginning to end. It's on Peacock and it's free if you live in the United States. I really wanted to try this out. So I ended up getting some diamond drill bits off of Amazon. They're really inexpensive. And I asked my dad for some help because I was a little bit apprehensive about drilling porcelain. And to be fair, so was he a little bit, but we figured it out and it was so much fun. So this was the process of making the tier servers. This DIY is actually relatively simple. You're just gonna need three different plates, a large one, a medium one, and a small one. Now, Parental advisory because I feel as if this is an activity that requires a little bit of expertise My dad used to be a professional closet builder and he is very handy and very knowledgeable with power tools So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure to find the center of your plate and then with a diamond drill bit You're gonna try to drill a hole through the center. This is a slow and steady process. This is not a race So it's definitely a lot of like putting the drill bit down and lifting it up We also happen to have a machine that held the drill steady which was really helpful with the bigger plates it didn't work but with the smaller and medium plates it did also something to note is that because the diamond drill bit is rubbing against porcelain it gets quite hot so you'll want to make sure that during the process you add some water to the plate to make sure that it doesn't break the porcelain or start sparking once you've drilled your holes you can go ahead and get attachment pieces and attach the tier i ordered mine on etsy 
and they're so freaking beautiful. You can also get them on Amazon. You can probably even thrift them if you look hard enough. I didn't happen to find anyone out thrifting, but I'm sure you definitely could. And then also just something to note is I actually didn't even think about the size of the actual bit of the hardware that connects the plates. So my diamond drill bits were a tad too big. We ended up making it work with some metal washers. However, make sure that you don't get a drill bit that's too large for the size of your hardware. Like I said, I also made the menus on Procreate on my iPad. So really, this was just a matter of going to the place where I knew I wanted to get my menus printed, figuring out the different sizes they had, and then plugging that size into Procreate and just sort of drawing it on. It was definitely like a trial and error type of thing. I don't love my handwriting, but I was making the menu. So it was sort of just like, okay, do what you can, write it out with like the neatest handwriting you can, and then just move along from it. As long as everything was readable, I felt like that was fine. And I actually think they ended up turning out really, really beautiful. I actually got them printed at Office Max and they were really affordable. So if you're ever looking to print menus, Office Max is a great option. I somehow forgot to mention the most intensive DIY that I did, which was actually creating the centerpieces for the table. Now, the tables ended up being too full for the centerpieces, but I did still use them as decor pieces around the room and around the house. But basically, I made these little terrariums, for lack of better words, but I took like a block of uh, semi-circle floral foam and I made little polymer clay butterflies, stuck some wire in them, and then I followed all the instructions, baked the clay, and attached them to the terrarium. Funny story, I actually thought I was ordering a fence for my actual real life garden in my backyard. Turned out I ordered a miniature modeling fence. So it was so tiny, but it was cool because I was able to find a purpose for it with this project and I think that they actually made the whole thing look so professional. I loved making them but I will say they just took the longest time. Another DIY that I made but it was before I decided to document sort of the process was a cloche with a massive butterfly in it. I adore how it turned out. For a while it was actually sitting on the fireplace in my room um, but <laughs> I like brought it downstairs for the tea and my mom was just so in love with it. I just like let her keep it with her spring decorations and whatever. Um, and I was really, really proud of it. I wish the other butterflies would have turned out like that one, but I will say I do feel like the shape is a bit more moth-like than actual butterflies, but it's a very small scale. They're miniatures and I feel like it's not the end of the world, you know what I mean? Um, and still, I was very proud of how they turned out. So here's the process for me making these. This is the longest chunk of the video because they took several hours to create. Okay, so here's the process for making those terrariums. Okay, so for this DIY, you're gonna need some colored clay. I'm just using pink and blue. You're also gonna need some black and white clay, a clay extruder, which you can find these online, some matching mica powder, which is basically just an iridescent powder, some wire, I'm using some earring wire, a foam half circle craft moss, and then you're also gonna need hot glue and possibly crazy glue later, just depending on how well your wire sticks into your butterfly. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take one of your colored clays and just sort of mix it into a ball and then you're going to just start to gently flatten it. You're going to press it a little bit flat and then also taper it out into a teardrop shape. Once you get it to a little teardrop, you're going to want to recreate this step four more times and each teardrop will act as a wing for the butterfly. So once you have your teardrops done, I just gently place them all together to see if they worked. And then after that, I'm just rolling up some black clay and I'm putting on this tip that has a ton of very thin holes 
and I'm just throwing it into my clay extruder to create these really, really thin sort of angel hair pasta looking strands of clay. Now, before I put the angel hair pasta on the <laughs> butterfly wings, I am just going to dust them with the mica powder. Something to note is that the mica powder does sort of eliminate the tackiness of the clay so you are gonna have to go ahead and score the clay before you add any details which is what i'm doing here with an exacto knife rule of thumb is just to do either small slices or little x's and it works really great for scoring the clay Once the clay is scored, I'm just going ahead and wrapping the outside rim of each wing with a black strip of clay and then just adding some organic lines on the inside to sort of mimic a butterfly. Feel free to use a reference image. I think I had a reference image the first time I made one of these and then after that I just decided to wing it. But yeah, so once you wrap it, just add some little organic lines on the inside and make it sort of look a little bit more like a butterfly. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the white clay, throw that into the clay extruder. And now this time, you're just gonna be cutting the most microscopic itty bitty little pieces and rolling them into tiny balls and pressing them into the tips of each of the wings. And that will just give that sort of spotty detail that emperor butterflies have. Once you have your teardrops done, you're gonna connect them pointy side to rounded side, if that makes sense. Then you're just gonna take a oval to put in the middle as the body. I did sort of differentiate by indenting around sort of the head area. And then I bent back the wings a little bit and just shoved the little wire into the bottom of the body of the butterfly. You can add antenna by just rolling up some clay, scoring it and attaching them. After I baked them, I realized that some of them weren't very sturdy on the wire, so I did just take some Gorilla Glue and a toothpick and rub it into the crevice where the wire was inserted into the clay piece. Now, if you don't want to make your butterflies, these are definitely something you could purchase, or you can purchase wooden ones or paper ones. Now, the next step is to lay out some paper, grab your foam ball and your craft moss and your hot glue, and get to work. So I just sort of put a layer of hot glue all over this little craft ball. In retrospect, I probably should have waited to put that much hot glue and just sort of done it section by section, but it ended up working out. Something to note is that it might be helpful to wear some sort of finger protection or to use a popsicle stick to press the moss down because I definitely burnt my hands quite a few times doing this. Definitely be careful while doing this project, but this is sort of a haphazard activity. We're just covering the foam ball everywhere and anywhere that you can with the moss. And then once it is fully covered, you're gonna take your butterflies, press them into the foam, and then add a dot of hot glue to secure them in. You can either put the hot glue before or after. I went with before so that I can push some of that hot glue into the hole. I put three butterflies per terrarium, I guess we were calling them, and I tried to make sure that I had different colors and different styles in each one. Once the butterflies were secured, I took my fence and I just section by section started to glue it on. This again, please use a popsicle stick or something. This was where I burnt my hands the worst. Like I actually burnt my hand pretty bad at one point doing this. So use a popsicle stick to sort of press the fence into the foam ball. Since there are so many holes in between the slats, it's really easy for the glue to seep out and burn yourself. But essentially you're just pressing it in. And once you've done that, your terrarium is complete.
As for everything else, I actually ended up sourcing the tea sets that I got from my friend Dakota as well. She picked up two boxes of full tea sets at an auction and she very graciously sold them to me. Um, so I was happy to pick those up. And then actually Lauren fell in love with one of the tea sets and I was happy to pass it on to her. So I sold it to her and she now has that at her house. And I have a cute little one with like blue flowers on it still. And I plan to probably do some teas again in the future. So I'm glad to have the tea set um, already. I also already had two teapots. I got one from Cracker Barrel, which I actually hauled here on the channel. And then one I had from a couple of years ago when my family did an English breakfast tea for Mother's Day. And so that was really easy. And then as for the food, <laughs> I cooked slash baked nearly everything that we had. There were a couple of things that I was really grateful that other family members sort of brought with them. My Aunt Ange made pecan puffs and she made little mini cheesecakes. And then my Aunt Linda made chicken salad and we put together chicken salad sandwiches. My Aunt Ange also made like these really incredible caprese, like bread sandwiches kind of things. And they were amazing. She made her own vinaigrette glaze. Um, and my Aunt Linda brought the mozzarella cheese down from a bakery in New York. So everything was like very fresh and really good. And then I made macarons, I made chocolate chip scones, raspberry white chocolate scones, chocolate chip cookies. I made Hawaiian roll sandwiches. I'm sure there's more, but you'll see it on the menu. I can't remember off the top of my head. And then Chloe, my brother's girlfriend, made the cupcakes, which was really lovely. I was so thankful that she did that. She made vanilla cupcakes with a fresh whipped cream uh, frosting and then we topped them with a strawberry. We did have a strawberry allergy in our family So we left a couple without strawberries, but yeah I mean, I think there were a couple of more things that I genuinely just like cannot think of at the at the moment But we had a ton of food. We ended up having a ton left over But almost everything got eaten over the course of the weekend when everyone was here um, and we just had such a good time so Thank you to all of my friends and family who helped pull this off. I have never felt more gratified and more accomplished in a task and I never enjoyed doing something more um, and so it was just a joy and a pleasure and an honor to be able to do this for my mom. As for decorations, I ordered a balloon arch on Amazon that had little butterflies that you can stick to it. I picked up a massive like yard sign that said like happy birthday on it from party city and then we picked up some tablecloths we wanted to just go simple because again we had some little children who were participating in the tea um and we wanted to just do easy cleanup so we went for plastic tablecloths which you could definitely do nice linens if you wanted to we did have real plates and real teacups and then i also ordered these little flower shaped spoons for the tea so everybody had like a little flower spoon for their tea but we used paper napkins and we used plastic tablecloths because we felt like that was a easier way to clean it up um, and especially if there was a spill we didn't want anything precious to get ruined and yeah I, th I think it was totally fine to do it that way yeah and so <laughs> i think that's really everything i wanted to share but that was the tea party and so here's a little bit of the final results <laughs>